Welcome to CWS Christian Writing and Speaking. I'm your host, Jackie Wilson. And today's guest is the founder of Abundant Encounters, an online ministry that helps Christians embrace and encounter lifestyle like Jesus. He says that Jesus did what he saw his father doing and said what he heard him saying. And we have all been invited into this as our inheritance on earth. He provides a weekly podcast that utilizes meditation and supernatural activations to help Christians be more intentional about practicing their connection to the Heavenly Father. He also offers inner healing counseling, consulting for businesses and ministries, and even mission trips. Let's welcome to the CWS stage, Mr. Joshua Marsingill. Welcome, Joshua. Awesome. Thank you, Jackie. I really appreciate you having me on. Yes, I'm so excited to hear about your journey to finding out about supernatural activation and also about, you know, why this particular ministry, we focus on so many other things, but I I love the focus that you have. Can you share your story? Yeah, um, so I was, you know, long story short, I was, uh, I was an atheist, uh, mostly agnostic, but uh, actually practicing atheism. Mm -hmm. And I had a radical um, encounter with Jesus. uh, And it was an open vision, kind of like looking at a dream, but actually, I was fully awake. And um, I was in a park in San Diego, California. So out in public and um, having a really radical experience with the Lord. Um, And uh, I saw Jesus and I saw his eyes, his eyes caught my attention and there was kindness in his eyes and I could not believe. And I just, even if people had told me, I had never been able to understand that Jesus was actually a person. And uh, he actually knew me and wanted to connect with me. And, um, and it definitely blew, blew up my whole world. I just had, I was like, I don't know you. I want to know you. And, um, and that kind of set me on a journey and thankfully into salvation, even at 27, I really, (laughs) I needed a life with God and, and he really did a lot to, to provide that. Um, but you know, it kind of set up my ministry as well, just because these encounters, they kept coming and I kept having experiences with God and he really took the limits off of that for me. And as he did that more and more, I started to realize that this was something I needed to learn how to give away and needed to learn how to help others to to experience because God is available. There's no shortage on encounters. Every last Christian that I've ever met needs more, ever met needs more experiences with God. God. Um, it's a refreshing, it's a renewal. It's, it's just everything that we all crave and need. And I, I do believe that God has given me some tools that are helpful. And um, so, so I love that part. I love facilitating. I love uh, helping people experience God even deeper, maybe than they have before. Yeah. So you talked about, you like to help people um, engage or in, um, have these encounters how Mm -hmm. is it that you lead people into these particular types of encounters one of my favorite things is i actually do a podcast as well it's called abundant encounters and each one of those episodes um, is geared into helping people have an experience um, with god and um, we always go from scripture and there's two things that you get when you hear scriptures it says faith and hearing so your ears open and your faith increases as you hear this at the scriptures just from the bible the bible's amazing <laughs> of course and so as we read that out loud you're listening you're hearing your faith is increasing and then we go into an activation the activation is pretty simple it's it's usually just asking god certain questions uh, we also have found um, um, I've found this in uh, my my side ministry, which is also just kind of inner healing and um, counseling that a lot of times when people have a block and they really can't connect or can't, um, you know, use their imagination to experience God and those kind of things, just to kind of open the door to experiencing God. If they can't do those things, then they may be believing lies. There may be some hurts or hangups in their past. Um, and so we 
you know, utilize scripture just to kind of open those doors, help people uh, lead them through forgiveness. And, um, and it's amazing how many times um, those simple tools will open the door and people will have radical experiences with God. And I mean, even a, a, a little experience with God is valuable, but, um, but yeah, there's no limit. So it's, you know, I mean, understanding that, you know, sometimes it's about cultivating our experience uh, with God from any l- level that we're at is also really important because, you know, everything is valuable. If it's coming from God, <laughs> if it's real, then it's, then it's valuable. And, um, and that's just how, how you begin to cultivate what I call an encounter lifestyle. Yeah. And you said you utilize meditation as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that and maybe how people can start utilizing that in their everyday life? Yes. I mean, there's a really simple, wonderful step-by-step process that uh, David actually teaches us in the Bible. (laughs) And so, you know, you can't go wrong there. It's in Psalms 19 um, and a biblical meditation is wonderful. It's nothing like Eastern meditation. And just to give you a little bit on what Eastern meditation, uh, the difference is that, you know, they're, they're basically in the Eastern ideas there you're one with the whole universe which uh you know it it means like either it means it takes you into this idea that you are god (laughs) which is pride or it takes you into this nothingness which is also a form of pride but it's uh but it's more feels more like i i worthlessness or something like that. So both of those ends are not good for Christians and it's not what we're looking for. Um, but, uh, kind of the awesome thing is that meditation is a tool that's used over and over again. I mean, there's just countless places in the scriptures where it's utilized for, um, connecting with God. So the person of God, so it's not an impersonal reality. It's, it's a, person of God. And that's what David shows us in Psalms 19. He, um, he utilizes uh, a couple of tools, which is gratitude. And as he just kind of looks and, and becomes grateful for his surroundings, he becomes very present. So that's a second tool. So it's gratitude. And he's, he's, he's in the present moment. And in that present moment, he finds and connects with God and God begins to explain, um, you know, kind of like, you know, the sun is dancing across the sky, like a, like a bridegroom, you know, running to its bride, all that kind of stuff. So like, and it's just this beautiful poetic experience, but if you really look at it, he's giving us a how to model on how to connect with God and meditate on the, on the scriptures. You can do it everywhere in the Bible, no matter what you're, you're experiencing. Every character in the Bible is something that you can connect to personally. It can, oh man, it's so heartwarming when you can, you know, connect with Moses and realize that you have things in common with who he was. And uh, meditation is, is a place that you can really do that with the Lord. Being present, gratitude kind of, there's another scripture, I think uh, in Psalms that says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Um, it is an access point. So we utilize that gratitude to become present. And in that present moment, we find that we're not alone and we never were, you know, I mean, that's just a, a lie that's, that's over, you know, trying to stay over humanity. But as we begin to be present, we connect with the, the person of, of our father and, you know, that orphan, uh, spiritually orphaned reality kind of just dissolves and we begin to realize that we're connected like God is real and he is available. So he's not just for the pastor on Sunday morning. He's for every last one of us. And, and we don't want to miss out because this really is our inheritance. God is holding all kinds of keys. And just like he did for David in this Psalm, he's, he kind of unleashes this ability for David to um, go into his, his inner self and do inner healing on himself. He's like, ah, if there's anything in, in me that doesn't line up with who you are. That isn't like in this perfect will, like the sun going over um, the horizon and all that. Like if it's not just right there aligned with you, I want alignment, Lord, help me align. And that's kind of the, you know, of course I'm paraphrasing, but that's kind of the experience that, that David is sharing with us in, in Psalms 19. And I believe it belongs to each and every one of us. We're actually in a new Testament reality. So it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, even David, he was so brave. He was pulling on new, new covenant realities, but um, for us, we're, we're here, we're, we're living this. Jesus has paid it all. 
we all have the same access to the father and the father is holding all of this uh, heavenly wealth, like a, like a secret bank account. I mean, it really is like that, you know, it is the empowerment that we all need. We need to, um, you know, it's, it's how we break out of the, the victimness of society that's so available to each and every one of us because, you know, of the fallenness of this world. And, you know, when we connect with the father, we, we learn that we're not, um, we're not abandoned, we're not alone, and that he did have a plan, he does have a destiny, and he's very willing to share it with us. And he's not holding it from us, he's holding it for us, he's protecting it, he's holding on to it, and it's right there in our relationship with him. So accessing our relationship with God is, in my opinion, very, very critical for every Christian experience. That this has nothing to do with leaving your church or leaving your community. Those things are absolutely wonderful, especially when you start to really experience God, because you kind of need a sounding board, of course, and just anything like that. You need to be around people, be around the Lord. Um, you know, we become whatever we worship. You know, what we worship is really just the things that we spend our time on, the things that we invest in. So, um, so even though I, you know, er, in every way, I would encourage you to, to learn how to do personal relationship with God on, in, on your own, in your prayer closet. Um, the way it's really going to play out in your life is through your community, through your, through your experiences, um, with, with God. And, you know, God is so good. He will, he will verify the things that he tells you in so many ways. Um, when we put ourselves around others that believe it's just all of this works together and it's a, and it, you know, and it's his plan from the beginning. Yeah. I love that. I mean, you said so many golden nuggets. I love the fact that you talk about like gratitude is our access to God. I love that. And that these are treasures that he is holding for us, man. That's so wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit more about your book? Yeah, uh, so my uh, experience with encounters was um, just so wild. I, I love that the Lord, you know, just in his kindness, he knew what I needed, like I needed it to be real. And, you know, I'm kind of like the Tom, the doubting Thomas who gets a terrible rap. <laughs> but, you know, I just didn't, I didn't believe and I wasn't going to believe in the kindness, the sweetness, the caring uh, father, he, he tore the veil and he came after me, he came after his lost son. And, um, and he grabbed me up with something that I could you know, I I could learn and I could experience and he communicated with with me on my level, which I think is just an invitation for every Christian out there. I mean, these no respect are persons. I'm not special to the book. I wrote it to kind of go through a lot of these different encounters, especially the big ones where I really came into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I really came into a personal relationship with Holy Spirit. And I really came into a personal relationship with Father God. And those, those three of events were, I mean, just spectacular. So, um, so I wrote about those, um, but all through the book, there's all these little exercises and activations that invite people into deeper relationships with God. Of course, any, you know, I believe testimony means do it again. It's a, it's the cultural definition of testimony, but it's why the Israelites shared testimonies with each other. So when you hear a testimony, it's always an invitation. Mm-hmm. It's always saying, hey, you know, this is something that God can do for you. And um, so that's that's kind of the approach I took in the book. Um, I, I had a really great editor <laughs> and she really, you know, rung me through the ringer to make it an excellent book. And I just I, it just it couldn't have come out better. It's, it's a fantastic read. And um, I believe it really will bless your life. It's called Encounters. And, um, and you can find it on Amazon. If you search my name, Joshua Marsingale, <laughs> then uh, you, you'll find a lot about me on, um, you know, on Google. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So what mm-hmm. is next for you, Joshua? You have your podcast, you have your book, what's next? What's the next big, big thing for you? Um, you know, we're, we're just, I love inner healing and I love doing sessions with people and I'm pressing in to do that, uh, more often we are, uh, gosh, I've got my hands in so many things right now. Thank God. I mean, God is really moving right now, um, all over the earth. Uh, we're 
just about to take off to Honduras to um, speak at some conferences about encounters. It's going to be so cool to do that with mm-hmm. leaders there. And um, so we're, we're doing that uh, next week. And then, but, uh, you know, online, I, I have found that this is my sweet spot. I love uh, Zoom meetings uh, with people where, uh, where they're interested in, in getting more breakthrough. I had, I've had lots of clients that have never had encounters or it's been too long since the last time they really felt like they experienced God. Those are my favorite kind of situations because so many of those, and uh, I'd say all, but I just feel like, you know, there's got to be somewhere that I missed it or something, but I can't remember one that didn't end up with them feeling like they were closer to God and having been able to have more experiences. And so it's just my, it's my favorite. God really loves this. Uh, I call it a wine skin. He just loves the wine skin of it. And he's so faithful. So all I get, I just get to be a facilitator. I sit back and watch God do his thing. And, and, you know, he's faithful to his kids. I, you can, you couldn't even stop him, you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's my favorite thing. Uh, that's our website. Um, and, you know, even locally, we've got a lot of fun stuff going on here in Selma, Alabama. Selma has a rich history and uh, civil rights movements and stuff like that. And we're, we're involved here in the culture to try to impact, to make a difference here. Um, there's, um, there's a lot of poverty in the area and um, there is a way, you know, God has solutions for all of this. And uh, so we've been working with uh, locals here and uh, my wife and actually actually moved here to be a part of, of what's going on. And we're pulling organizations together and we have so much hope for the future. You know, we're still building, but it's just such a cool thing that God has got us involved in, with here. So, yeah, so thank there, you lots so of things. Much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much for sharing it. Now, you told people you can they can find your book on Amazon um, mm-hmm. um, and, or by looking up your name. Tell them your website address. AbundantEncounters.com. All right. People. Mm-hmm. You have heard Mr. Joshua's testimony and just how God um, invited him to get to know him better and what he's doing with the gifts that God has given to him. Now, if you are struggling to connect with God, to have an abundant encounter, please connect with Josh. And not only you, if you know somebody else who may be struggling, connect them with Josh so that your life can have an enriching experience. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I greatly appreciate what Joshua is doing. And until next time, beautiful people, God bless. Thank you.